Dobar dan, dear ministers, or representative of the government, excellencies, dear guests, dear Robert, thank you for inviting me to talk on, the, on behalf of the United Nations. I will start with the big piece of news of the day, and that's global news, and it's a rather good news. COP28 has concluded today with a declaration that does include formally and for the first time transition out of fossil fuel. So it's not phasing out, but it's transition. And certainly uh, we already know that we will spend the next year lobbying for a formal phase out declaration next year. Why I mention this is because climate change, as much as peace, or climate change will work hand in hand with peace in the coming years, in 2024, and for the next so many years. So I think um, I'd like to say that the work of all the ministers that have talked before me will actually be influenced by how we deal with climate change. And it's important that we keep this as sort of our guiding framework, and certainly it will be our guiding framework for the United Nations work in Serbia, along with, of course, the Sustainable Development Goals. And on this, I want to mention that uh, at the last uh, General Assembly in September, Serbia did recommit to uh, Agenda 2030. It was one of 32 countries that made a formal commitment and expressed a number of priorities. Now, I want to mention that uh, these priorities were shaped around six transitions, and this will be our priorities for 2024 for the United Nations. These six transitions, I hope you will remember them, I will list them now. The first transition is the energy transition. Many of you will be already involved and you will be involved in the energy transition. And I want to say that uh, in the past uh, few days, Serbia has committed to a number of pledges at COP28 I will list two of them. That is the Global Renewable and Energy Efficiency Pledge. This, and it's very important to know, this is a commitment to triple the renewable energy generation and double the annual rate of energy efficiency by 2030. So this represents a huge commitment from uh, 67 countries, I think, including Serbia, uh, which is, of course, a huge opportunity uh, for the business as well. The second pledge which Serbia signed on in the past few days is the Global Cooling Pledge. This is about reducing cooling-related emissions across all sectors by about 70% by 2030. Again, these are important commitments from Serbia. The second transition that uh, we will work on uh, this coming year and beyond, is uh, the sustainable food system. Now, again, at the COP28, Serbia has signed the pledge, uh, the Declaration on Agriculture, Food and Climate, which aim to integrate agriculture and food system into all national adaptation plans, into the national determined uh, commitments, the NDCs, into long-term strategies, into national biodiversity strategies and action plans by 2030. So again, for many of us in the room here, um, this is an important commitment on food system. The third transition is about uh, pollution and loss of biodiversity. Uh, Serbia this year for the next three years chairs the Carpathian Convention on Biodiversity and Sustainable Development. And we really hope that this will contribute to accelerate um, the work on restoring uh, biodiversity and addressing pollution, mostly air and water pollution. The fourth pillar of our work will be digital transformation. And here I want to mention that uh, Serbia is trailblazing as a country in digital transition. Uh, the, the purpose of the UN here is really to focus on vulnerable groups, marginalized groups, uh, such as, for example, the elderly or uh, young people or the Romas, and really to support the digital transformation in the context of the needs for these different groups. The fourth, the, sorry, the fifth transition will be social protection and jobs. The sixth transition will be transforming education, and my colleague from UNICEF will talk more about this a bit later. 
I also want to mention that uh, uh, addressing the needs of refugees and supporting uh, a, a protection approach to uh, migrants will remain a very important piece of our work. Now, um, there are many stakeholders in Serbia, a lot of resources, financial resources, capacities. So I just want to highlight here that the niche for the United Nations in a country like Serbia, in an upper middle income country, is first and foremost to address inequalities and leave no one behind. I hope you all know that the leave no one behind principle is at the core of Agenda 2030. And for us, this means finding and shaping solutions for the most vulnerable, this is a country that has developed a tool, and I'm looking at the former minister who was key in developing this tool, uh, that is called a Leave No One Behind tool. It is supposed to be mainstreamed through all the laws, all the strategies, to make sure that uh, the, the specific parameters, the specific needs of vulnerable groups, of marginalized groups, are addressed. And, uh, one of our, I think, one of our uh, success in the United Nations is to have introduced the concept of the just transition in the context of the green transformation, in the context of the energy transition. So really, I hope that this is something that many of you will help us focus on in the coming years. To conclude, I want to bring one more topic that has never left the prom burner and uh, that is, of course, peace. Um, I, I'm not going to talk too much about it, but I certainly want to make sure that uh, you, you are all aware that in July 2023, the UN Secretary General launched a new agenda for peace. I know it's hard to talk about peace now, but at the same time, we must talk about peace. And uh, I will just highlight three components of this new agenda for peace, which I think are very relevant uh, to, uh, to Serbia and the region. Number one is the need to build trust, solidarity, and accountability. Uh, this is the social uh, contract between states and the citizens, and uh, I hope that um, uh, this will be at the core of the work of the upcoming uh, cabinet and, um, and of all the mayors and MPs that will be uh, elected. The, the second part is prevention, and this is very important for us, the UN, and I hope we will, we will work together with many of you here. Prevention, so prevention of conflict, preservation of peace, should be a universal goal for every country, not just for those experiencing conflict. The consequences of conflict, and we have seen it in the past uh, three years, reverberate beyond national borders, and the prevention does not only apply to the conflict, conflict-affected countries. All countries need to recognize and commit to preventing and sustaining peace and develop national and regional prevention strategies, reframing prevention as a national agenda. So again, this is a call from the UN to make sure that um, all um, upcoming uh, political leaders and uh, community leaders will take peace as one of their core agenda, in, uh, along with, of course, uh, the human rights agenda. Now, I finish by saying that in 2024, the UN uh, will have a summit of the future in September, and so we expect that there will be multiple national and, re and local consultation here in Serbia to not only inform the summit of the future, which is about looking at the world in 2050, but also to look at uh, uh, consultation with all sorts of uh, groups, uh, young people, uh, different minorities, uh, rural pe people in the rural areas, but really this consultation to see what is it that people, what are people's expectations, what are their hopes, how do we see the future, how can we build and co-create the future together. This is something that the UN will support. And I wish you all a happy and certainly peaceful year-end. Thank you again for inviting me. Thank you.